Hey, it's Brooks. As I mentioned last week, I've been crunching on some client projects recently with absolutely no time left over, but rather than leave you with nothing this week, I thought I'd share one traditional critique, that of Bengi Man's, but first, something a little different when it comes to critiques, a character design consultancy that I did for the YouTube animator Get Mads. A few little notes and adjustments that I had for him, it's the kind of thing that I find really interesting, and I think it can be valuable to you too. Remember that you can always get a critique of your own over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. Can't wait to get back to content in earnest next week, and enjoy the critiques. Hey there, Get Mads. So I figured I'd just record a quick video the way that I do my critiques typically, um, just to give you some context on a few things, because I wrote notes, um, but I also kind of went into a, a drawing coma just kind of working on this, and so I wanted to explain a few things that aren't in the notes. Um, so first of all, the uh, probably the thing you're drawn to first is like the coloring and stuff I'll, I'll get to that in a minute um based on your original here here's the uh here's your little avatar like with the the stem actually in the head um you can I, I did alternative head shape stuff here and you know like we're friends and stuff so don't don't worry about like if you wanted to you could straight up just trace my work but if in the chance you're like oh i don't really like that head shape um don't don't hesitate to try something else, but let me explain sort of the reasoning for this. So, one thing um, from your initial sketch, that which I, I really like your your whole your style and everything, um, something that comes up sometimes is like claustrophobia of the features of the face. Um, there's a maybe just not enough room to express and stuff. Like there's very little room on the on the sides of the eyes and stuff here. Um, so what I've done is kept the eyes really big, but built out the mass of the head, um, especially kind of in the back there, so that you have a little bit more room to, to play around with. Um, and also the, the mass of the head itself is more than just a single sphere, right? Or it's more of that, that bean shape. The reason for that being you, when you have a, a character who is a head by themselves, kind of, kind of like Kirby, but we're not going to think about Kirby because Kirby's perfect, but like not everyone can make Kirby, essentially, right? This is a completely different kind of style. What you're, you're trying to do here, or what I'm trying to solve here, is by creating a head that's also a body, you give the head that same sort of uh, arcing capability that we have with our spines in order to express, because a lot of expression comes from the arc of a spine forward or backwards. And so that's what I kind of did here. Um, this sort of pushes in, right? So with the main kind of shape of the head here where it's he's kind of he's drooping forward here's a here's a version with little arms uh, you know possibility of adding those if you want um, but because of everything kind of hanging while he's floating right um, you have a little bit of a droop forward with him but then and it's kind of a, a forward arc because you see there's the pinch right here and that smooth on the outside here is just the opposite right where you still have the the line for like the brows but this stretches and then this pinches in right there. So that's the flexibility in, that you have. Um, one thing I'll just say is make sure, whatever you go with, make sure you know him from all sides like this because it makes a huge difference. Even though, so I, I know you do your work in character animator and stuff and so you might only have the one drawing or something, right? But knowing him from every direction kind of helps you to, to understand and really know like when an expression is right. So the other idea about that I had here was your... Um, main avatar character is almost in this like seven eighths perspective, right? They're they're almost forward facing, and even the hair pieces are sort of these flat fa uh, faces. And I was thinking with this character because he's mainly only ever going to be interacting with your avatar or maybe speaking to the audience, right? Um, if you keep him in this three quarter view, like three quarter view hovering over, s over the side, um, and then all you need to do to have him address the audience is just bring these pupils over. Right, and now he's now he's talking to the audience, kind of like a fourth wall break instead of being forward facing. Right, um, what was the next thing? Oh, right, the coloring. So here's a, an example that's very. I, I don't know how detailed you want to get. Um, this this version probably fits your existing style a little bit more, um, where it's just these smooth gradients, right? But what I went for was because he's fruit based and everything. Just the things that are appealing about. Um, is that a is that a fruit pun? Maybe uh, about fruit is a lot of the gradation and spotting and stuff, and then also that that little bit of shine and stuff that we get with fruit. Um, and then here is just a colored line art version. And I 
kept some things like these teeth are uh, symmetrical, right? There's a tooth on either side, but you know, you can kind of mess around with that. Also understand your, your feet shape, very important. These are basically just Kirby or Goomba feet, right? They're just the, those little half, uh, half sphere sort of bean, elongated bean shapes. Um, and I think that's everything. Oh, right, that may be the most important thing, and I don't know why I didn't address it, is the eye sockets. Uh, this is the thing that you see with like, most notably like with Stitch or Simba, right, is this outer shape of the eye socket. And the eyeball kind of rests inside it, and it gives you that domino mask shape. And it means that the eyes are a little bit more recessed into the head, right, like here. Um, maybe it's kind of more like this, right? Where there's a little bit of area in front of it. And that means that you get things like part of the eye being covered in here, even though you don't have a nose, right? Because it's recessed back. And it just, to me, I like it kind of gives a little bit more of an evil vibe, right? Um, the other thing I just remembered too is with these leaves, and I, I kind of made sure I, there's some spots where I did it in the sketches, but not. Um, I would, in these central, like, uh, you know, I don't know what you call these veins, right? Um, if you want to, you can do like a full line from the inside uh, to the outside like that from, from end to end. But then as soon as you do that, make sure you kind of erase away and, and cut in. You don't want like these tangents, right? Um, and that's when I realized once I had inked it, I was like, I don't really like how you're kind of cutting the, the shape in half instead of adding some contour to it. So just make sure you do that where you never really complete these lines, even though it might be that way literally on a on a leaf um, just from a character design perspective yeah see here like that's probably not a good idea to have those touching um, at least not at the ends of the leaves right okay hopefully that's everything let me know if you have any questions i feel like i covered it all thanks a lot hey there bengi man let's let's get into this how's it going uh so i've assembled a little bit of your work here I've seen the things that you're talking about you want to improve, uh, specifically you feel like you go too fast and that you don't know what you don't know, which is very astute. I think that's a, that's a good answer that anyone could give when, uh, when looking for help, right? Is you don't know what you don't know. Um, you, it's always good to have other eyes on your stuff to help you understand what maybe you're not, not grasping. So here's a little bit that I've put together and the main thrust that I'd like to, to get with you on is uh, not being averse to use using angles and kind of hard shapes and being able to break things down into more complex forms if that makes sense so here's what i have as far as drawovers um here's a here's a really good example of like it's it's a cute panda and everything and everything looks like it it works right um but then we get to something like here where the arms are kind of one big sort of noodle set over top of the torso. And ideally what we'd like to see is some actual structure there so that you understand, okay, the animal has a torso, right? Then there's the arms coming off of it. And the same thing up here, this this shape flow is nice into the head. Um, it's something that you can, you can retain at, at some capacity, right? Where you've got just kind of the arms going straight up into here. And obviously the actual animal is going to have that too. But I'd like to see you show a little bit more of maybe this separation of the skull shape and the head shape into kind of segments like this. So for example, you've got this main sort of head sphere, right? And then off of that, like a sort of a jaw shape. And obviously in the back, you know, it's different for every creature, but in the back you've got all of the neck and everything that sort of builds out the bottom. So it isn't just this one circle, it's you've got additional things kind of going on. This is a side view, of course. Okay, so that's what I'd like to see you do a little bit more. And this is sort of an example of how you can do that. Maybe these, you know, I would, uh, let's see, maybe I'd shave this down just a little bit, right, on the sides. Um, but that's the general idea, right? With these legs here, I, I added a little bit of a taper for you, um, where it's just like big feet is great and everything, but we want to see just a little bit more believability. And I added even some, some sharp corners in here, right? And that usually a sharp corner or just an angle, right? Is like the edge of a basic 
3D shape. And so you kind of have to know that in order, you need to know that that information is there before you can actually add it, right? So just think about in terms of your characters as you're going forward, think of them in those those basic shapes, right? Try and wrap your head around them. Um, here's another one here where I just did a little bit with the pose. Here we've got, so here's, let me turn this off. I realize that uh, for other people watching, it's they need to be able to see the original artwork, right? So this is ghosted out. That's what it looks like. So that's your original pose for our, our human character here in the middle. And here's the change that I made. Let's bump that down a little bit more. So this is just a slightly more relaxed pose. Um, instead of the shoulders kind of being up here and the arms coming off like that, it's not really a, a position we tend to find ourselves in. And this arm here is kind of coming down uh, and then not resting at any point here. So instead I have her just kind of resting it on the side. Maybe, you know, it's coming through the bag or, or uh, over top of it, right? Behind it, something like that. You can incorporate the bag from there. But even with, if she was kind of resting on the bag, it would be a little bit closer, right? And the same with the feet here. I think this is kind of important is the positioning of them right now is sort of like one foot is completely sideways while the other one is facing forward. It's a little bit of an, an awkward, uh, especially when you're trying to do that. Like it, usually your feet kind of end up in an L shape. I'm kind of doing it myself here. But to have one foot forward and to the side isn't really a natural position. Uh, up here, you'll notice that with the head that you've got here, there's a, it's kind of one basic circle, right? And kind of like we were talking with the panda, the head is a little bit more complex than that. Than that. So this is, let's see, we've got uh, sort of the main head sphere here, but then just a bit of a jawline coming down off of here. Even when a character or a human being is very round faced, they still don't have a truly spherical head, right? There's a lot of extra information going on. I also did a little bit of work here and down on the acorn where you're just uh, finding a center line for the head, right? Find out what direction or angle the head is facing. So for us here, it's, it's kind of this, it's toward us and to the side a little bit. And then from there, you can add things like the eye sockets, right? Which are right here. Um, and that way you have a little bit more indentation and it allows you to lay the, the things like the eyes, eyebrows and the eyes uh, in a way that, that makes sense in perspective, right? So we have our eye here behind the nose just a little bit, right? And the nose, it falls exactly on that center line. Okay, so even if it's just, if it's turning the head a little bit more from where you're, you initially had the pose, that's sort of the idea going forward. And of course here you would just want a little bit more of a skull if this was, you know, actually bald, uh, bald. Otherwise, you know, a little bit of the hair kind of indicating that there's more back here is definitely helpful for you. Okay, uh, Sonic is, honestly, I feel like a deceptively difficult character. Uh, seems seems to be a simple character to draw at first. Um, and of course, there's people who are great at, at drawing him and have a lot of practice in, in him. Um, here, what I, I noticed specifically, uh, I've got a a little bit of a pose change for you here where the energy kind of pushes up a little bit more so that there's this curve in the back and maybe that you know the chest comes forward a little bit more like that and then again not being afraid of sharp angles we we can still have a rounded elbow on this arm but you kind of want that to be the intersection of two 3d shapes right here right so we can still round that but we want a, a clear difference unless you're going for like a truly you know adventure time really wavy arm style right um, this arm here is just recurving a bit so it comes down and out this way and then curves in the way that you have it um, that's a natural thing that we find in the arms is there's sort of this this shape instead of just a pure bend and that's uh, like on a, a bone structure on a muscle le mu uh, level those are those are those tend to be true. And then up here in the face, we've got just like, here's a, you know, I'm not very practiced with Sonic, but just considering the shapes that are being used. Um, this line here is a little bit uneven, right? You've got kind of a, a change here that, that makes this all flat. And another area here, which I 
meant to mention on, on this part of the head is a little bit of an indentation where the eye socket is. If you feel it on your own eyes, there's that, that socket even to the edge of the face, kind of where your temples are and a little bit lower. The, the face is actually making, you know, from the side, it's making that kind of indentation. It's a little bit exaggerated, right? But they aren't just laying flat. And so if, if your eyes aren't laying flat, then that means the edge of the face has a little bit of that curve to it, especially at a little bit of a three quarter view. So that's something I would kind of cut into here. And then this line and this line uh, as far as like the center of the face seem to be a little bit at odds with each other. So again, that's why it's useful to use some lines that kind of indicate the overall flow of your character first and then everything can build off of it and things won't necessarily contradict it. Okay, these acor acorn characters, excuse me, down here are super cute. Um, and so that same idea of using a 3D shape is what I did here, kind of redoing this guy here a little bit. Um, so here it's that same idea of like a disc versus a ball, right? So this shape, maybe it's hard to indicate or a little bit harder to indicate that things are 3D. Um, but as soon as you see, you've, you've done a good job of it here where you've got kind of the arms uh, overlapping on one side and, and being hidden behind on the other. But just something to kind of keep in mind is allow things to sort of wrap around each other and avoid areas like this um, where something that clearly has more uh, to it uh, past what we can see, not just cutting it off, um, because that might give us the appearance that, oh, maybe it's just kind of a paper cutout or something like that, okay? Um, and something like here, this could benefit from, you know, a single line of action running through your character, just kind of get a pure pose and maybe help refine some of that uh, anatomical structure, okay? So hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, just a few things to kind of work into your flow a little bit more. You have a lot of charm and appeal to your work, so it's just some of those technical things to brush up on. All right, thanks a lot, thank you, man.